Guys, I did work for this woman about a year and a half ago. I fixed the toilet on the second floor. Why she didn't call me this time is beyond me. Anyway, she was getting a high water bill. Uh, she was snooping around the house and then realized that her automatic water feeder on her steam boiler was cycling every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes in July in 95 degree heat, she must have a huge leak under the ground. Anyway, instead of calling me, she calls somebody else first. Big mistake. And... Uh, they took her for a ride, and that's what this video is about. So anyway, it's about the before situation and about what I did afterwards. It's not a play-by-play, uh, -play, you're going to see me soldering copper and all the rest of that good stuff. It's basically the before product and the finished product, and you'll get the gist of the video. But guys, you got to be careful who you call. There are bad guys out there. Stick around. I'll be right back after the intro. All right, this customer realized uh, she had a problem when she got her water bill. Soon after that, she realized uh, upon going downstairs that her water feeder was cycling every 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, she tells me, in July, this boiler is losing water, which indicates to me there's got to be a huge leak under the ground somewhere. Now, there's a rear portion to this house and a front portion to this house, and we'll walk through it. And unfortunately for her, she didn't call me first, but we'll get to that in a minute. So here's the main going up, and it's going toward the back of the house, the rear. There's a garage back there with a heated space above it. There are bedrooms above the garage. So it goes through the wall, and uh, I'll get in there. I'll turn around, and you'll see uh, it comes through the petition, and it starts to feed uh, going towards uh, the garage. And there's a T-connection that's going toward the front of the house. All the way to the front of the house, there is another uh, set of returns now we come in, we turn, we are going to the extreme rear of the garage, and you're going to see a riser going up there. You're going to see uh, a couple of risers in the rear before it drops down and it goes under the concrete. And uh, at one point, I'm assuming they had a leak and it was broken up and redone. Now, I will tell you that when I cut this return off down at the floor, when I replaced it with a dry return, there was not a stitch of water inside this pipe. I cut that off. I looked down inside and it was bone dry. I mean, there was not a drop of water in there, which kind of tells me there's got to be some kind of a huge leak going on. But anyway, you'll see here where they broke the floor up and they went towards the boiler room. And what they did was scoot underneath the wall there. And I'll show you in a second on the other side of the wall where they came back into the boiler and they uh, tied back into the return. So that's the rear portion of the return. So now let's take a walk to the front of the house. I'll show you where that T is feeding, that previous T I showed you, but the ceiling, it's coming through the petition here and it's feeding uh, rooms in the front of the house. So it goes all the way to the front, rises going up, uh, this is an extremely old building. And in the rear here, I am walking on a raised wooden floor. So I'm assuming at, at some point they had a leak in the return in the life of this house. And what they did, I believe, I didn't verify it yet, but I strongly believe that this return that you see going down is not under the concrete until it gets to a certain point. I believe they pulled up the floorboards here and it's sitting on top of the concrete until they get to a point where they have to cross over to the boiler. And you'll see that coming up. You can see where these boards were taken up. And uh, they got to a certain point and then they had no choice. They had to cross back to the boiler to get the, the water back to the boiler. And you'll see that in a second here where they broke up the concrete. Um, she grew up in this house. So, you know, it was her parents' house. And like I said, there was work done here before. So they broke this up and then they came back up into the boiler. So unfortunately, like I said, they didn't call me first or she didn't call me first and she called someone else, another contractor. And their solution to this problem, which... I mean, right off the top of my head indicates a leak and a return somewhere, but they sold her a water feeder at a cost of $3,000. They took out basically a perfectly good working water feeder, charged her $3,000, and soon after they left, 
this thing started to cycle every 10 minutes. And I insisted that she call them back and try to get some restitution, but uh, she didn't want to be bothered. Uh, you know, I asked her why she didn't call me. She says, oh, I didn't think you'd do jobs like this. I says, well, you could have at least called me and asked me. I would have guided you. But at any rate, uh, there are companies like this out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a dry return back to the boiler and I'm going to take it from this point here. I'm going to knock this elbow off. I'm going to knock that off. I'm going to drop down below and you'll see that. I'm going to drop down below the return here. I'm going to try to pitch it minimally, uh, you know, because I asked her about headroom and she said she didn't care. She just, you know, it doesn't make a difference. She's the only one that lives in the house. Uh, and you're going to see there's a, there's a waste stack in that wall going down. There's a four inch waste stack in there. Anyway, I'm going to scoot down to the floor. I'm going to tuck it in the corner. I, I am going to have to break up the cement going across the doorway here. We can't have her tripping over the pipe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot back into the boiler room. I'm going to break a hole in, in that block to get me to the other side. And I will, uh, I will, I will go back in uh, once I cut off the existing connection there. I will cut that elbow off at the floor and I will take that nipple out. And that's what I'm going to do. And what I did was at the other end, I actually took a carbide blade. I sliced that elbow and then I popped it with a chisel. Now, I ordinarily would have changed that nipple. I felt the nipple was viable. The reason I didn't take it out is because between that nipple and the left wall, although it doesn't look like it, there was a six inch space. So there was no way I was getting a sawzall in there to take that out or to cut it out. Uh, I'm going to take responsibility. I feel it's vi a viable. And, uh, you know, that was my call. So what I usually do with nipples like this that look viable, but, you know, in the back of your head, you always wonder. I get my plumber's lampwick always, and I will put a few rounds of lampwick in between the threads. I follow that up with Teflon, with my... Uh, Blue Monster Teflon, followed by Blue Block Thread Sealant, which to me is bulletproof. I'll leave links to all the product I use in this video down below. And you'll see that here. I have a two by inch and a quarter elbow on there, and you'll see that Blue Block Sealant on there. Again, bulletproof. And the final product is an inch and a quarter M-type copper dry return that I'm taking all the way back to the boiler. Now, I insulated that. Uh, she said it gets cold in the garage. I don't know how cold it gets, but I didn't want to, I didn't want that water being tempered, that condensate being tempered going back before it drops down into the main. So I covered it with insulation. Um, it wasn't m much more of a cost. So I said, let me just cover this and, and, and cover my butt, so to speak. And what I did do is I put a quick vent about 18 inches back from where I dropped down uh, so I can get that steam there quite quickly and then the condensate can drop down to the floor and you'll see I, I had put a brace up to to tie that piece of copper and I, and I ran it all the way to the corner because it was a stack to the left of that pipe and I didn't want to stick a screw through that stack so down to the floor tucked it in the corner and I did break up the concrete going across the doorway I have tar paper below above as well as wire lath on top before I cemented. So that's not going anywhere. And even if it develops some cracks, it's not going to move because of the wire lath. And I had to make a wonky return here with a few fittings because that wall wasn't square. And I was trying to meet up with things. And, and even coming through the petition, that wasn't a perfect 90 degree angle, although it looks like it, but it's not. So at this point, I filled the boiler up. And the water is in there. Actually, I went back last week and I put a new gauge in for her. But it held for two and a half hours. That's, that's how long it took me to clean the place, uh, you know, while I was there. And I turned the switch back on again. The feeder was on. And I spoke to her last week and she tells me that this thing hasn't cycled at all. So that kind of tells me that uh, it's looking good. Now, am I really going to be able to tell? until this thing is running and the, and the boiler, you know, reaches pressure. No, but uh, we'll revisit that in the fall. I'm going to go back in the fall. I'm going to do a preseason tune-up. 
But as it stands now, the water in that boiler is holding, and that theater, uh, by the time I upload this video, it's probably going to be about two and a half, three weeks, and uh, she said to me that uh, that feeder is holding and everything is looking good. And uh, that's it, guys. So that's what I did in the rear of the house. Uh, fingers crossed. She doesn't have any problems. But if so, you know, I may just be replacing a piece in the front that's going across where they buried it in the concrete. Because, again, like I said, I, I really think it's above the ground. So there you go, guys. Uh, unscrupulous contractors out there. So guys, there you go. That's what I did. I ran a dry return in the back. I abandoned the wet return under the garage floor and it's holding like a charm. I spoke to her last week. It's been about two and a half weeks since I did the job. She said it's not cycling. It seems to be holding well and that's good news. Are we really going to be able to tell whether that front one's leaking? Not until the fall, guys. Not until I get this boiler running and maybe can build up some steam pressure to see if there's a problem in the front. But as it stands now, I got it. And she's happy, I'm happy, and man, I can't wait for winter to come. You know, 95 degrees, the humidity when I did that job, it was horrible. Anyway, guys, if you like what you see, consider subscribing to the channel. But the most important thing you can do is to give me a thumbs up, like this video. Otherwise, YouTube is not going to show them to anybody. I'm telling you. You don't give it a thumbs up, they don't show these videos to nobody. Anyway, guys, I look forward to seeing you again in my next video. Stay well and be careful who you call. Get recommendations from friends, neighbors, uh, family members, somebody. There are bad guys out there, and this is what they do to people. Anyway, stay well. I'll see you next time. And as I always like to say, guys, happy plumbing.